The kinky sex lives of Roman gladiators. Gladiators were the heroes of ancient Rome, and people watched their fights with great enthusiasm. At the same time, there was a social stigma against their existence because gladiators were first slaves and only then fighters. Many women wanted to have sex with them or feel their sweat as a kind of aphrodisiac. Gladiators were fierce and virile fighters desirable for the satisfaction of sexual urges. Because of their position in society, the sex life of gladiators was very interesting and carried with it certain piquancy and bizarreness. We learn about it based on sexual graffiti, archaeological evidence, and the works of contemporary writers. There is a lot of evidence about how gladiators led their sex life, and we bring you an interesting story about everything that was part of their sex life. As mentioned, gladiators did not have a favorable position in ancient Rome. Most of them were slaves and prisoners, but people were fascinated by them because most of them had a similar status in society and were in the lower social classes as the gladiators. Gladiators were at the level of other men or women who sold their services like actors or sex workers. They were very brave because their lives were on the line and every time they fought they would face mortality. It was precise because of this risk that they had enormous respect among people. Because of their victories in the arena, they were loved by members of the fairer sex, and they attracted the attention of distinguished women who were married to numerous Roman rulers. The wives of Roman emperors were not immune to sex with gladiators. They enjoyed satisfying their sexual desire with such strong and brave guys who were in a bare fight for their lives every time in the arena. Faustina the Younger, the wife of Marcus Aurelius, fell in love with a gladiator. It was rumored that the gladiator was the father of Aurelius' son. According to two famous Roman historians, Herodian and Dio Cassius, the wife of Marcus Aurelius was madly in love with one of the gladiators and told her husband about it. The Roman emperor consulted the prophets to indicate what he should do to alleviate his wife's passion for the gladiator. They told him that the gladiator must be executed at the moment when he would be in a position as if he wanted to have intercourse with Faustino. His blood would fall on Faustina, and she would immediately have sexual intercourse with her husband, which again speaks of how much the Romans believe that gladiatorial blood brings good luck and is an incredible sexual aphrodisiac. Commodus, who was the son of Marcus Aurelius, may actually have been the son of a gladiator. He later became emperor, but he much preferred participating in gladiatorial combats to being emperor. He mostly fought with gladiators who had some kind of disability or with animals. Messalina, who was the wife of Emperor Claudius, was labeled a nymphomaniac and her lovers were mostly gladiators. How much she loved to have sex with the gladiators is best expressed by the fact that she saved one gladiator from certain death after being defeated in battle. Of course, that gladiator was also her lover, so he was very lucky to be alive. The fact that gladiators were desirable men speaks well of the fact that they also highly valued their bodily fluids such as sweat and blood, which were used as sexual aphrodisiacs. Gladiator sweat was used as a perfume and as a certain type of beauty treatment for the skin. It was even sold just as a souvenir in huge pots. Like their sweat, their blood was used as an aphrodisiac. On the wedding night, a young woman would part her hair with a sword dipped in the blood of a deceased gladiator. It was believed that if she did this, her marriage would be long and fruitful. The Romans believed that the blood and sweat of gladiators would increase sexual desire. The gladiator's sweat would be mixed with dirt and olive oil, and the mixture would be used as an aphrodisiac. This was very bizarre from today's perspective, and surely such a move would be considered insane today. In ancient times, however, such a move can be justified, and the use of the blood and sweat of gladiators was considered a certain type of superstition that brings happiness to women and fruitful marriages. In those marriages, the manly gladiators did not bring happiness only if they cheated very respectable husbands with them. In Pompeii, archaeologists have discovered graffiti that reveals how the Romans felt about their favorite gladiators. Floronius, privileged soldier of the 7th Legion, was here. The women did not know of his presence. Only six women came to know, too few for such a stallion. Another says, Antiochus hung out here with his girlfriend Cythera indicating that gladiators, in fact, had girlfriends. There were also inscriptions like, Celadus the Thracian gladiator is the delight of all the girls, and Celadus the Thracier makes the girls moan. Such inscriptions speak about how popular gladiators were, and especially how much they were loved by the fairer sex. It is not the clearest one who wrote this type of inscription. It is suspected that this was even done by gladiators in order to build an even better reputation in society. They were all excellent fighters, slim, tall, strong, and virile men, and they were quite rightly the favorites of the ladies. 
Knowing what kind of guys the gladiators were, choosing those guys as your security isn't a bad move at all. Such a decision was made by many elite ladies in ancient Rome. That job was mostly done by retired or very well-trained off-duty warriors. It was a lucrative business, which is quite a logical thing to do with the distinguished persons they protected. Given that we are talking about the sexual life of gladiators on this occasion, it is clear that rich Roman ladies did not choose them only to protect them when they go on certain trips. But gladiators could be hired for just one night. Back then, the ladies wanted the gladiators to preserve their bodies which would mean having sex with them for all the reasons already mentioned. Women would pay an enviable sum of money to spend the night with the gladiators. The Roman gladiators were not freely available for sex. To keep their fighting spirit high, their masters put a large ring through their foreskin. So paying to spend the night with a gladiator literally meant getting a ring away from him. Female gladiators were not as common as male gladiators. For a long time, there was a ban on women being able to participate in gladiator fights. When they got that opportunity, they were very sexualized and attractive. They wore loincloths instead of tunics worn by male gladiators. They did not wear helmets to show off their beautiful faces and hairstyles. Female gladiator fights were the pinnacle of enjoyment and could often be seen at private parties held by the Roman elite. In addition to the work they normally did in the arenas, gladiators saw in sexual relations as a good opportunity to earn money. So in a way they represented a kind of escort for male prostitutes who sold their bodies to rich Roman ladies who would later use their blood and sweat for happiness and as an aphrodisiac in their marriages with Roman emperors. The most beautiful gladiators were the most valued and when the fighters in the arena were chosen, their beauty was taken into account. Ugliness would destroy erotic fascination, while beauty expressed the pain and potential mortality faced by gladiators. The Roman poet Juvenal criticized women in his satires, so he was accused of misogyny. He thought women were very immoral because he wanted to prevent a friend from marrying one of those women. He wrote the story of Epia, the wife of a Roman senator who left her husband for a gladiator. Epia gave all the wealth of this world to be with a gladiator named Sergius and went with him to Egypt. From another perspective, it would be an inspiring story of love, but from the Roman poet's perspective, it was the story of a very evil woman. Although the arenas saw a fight for bare life between gladiators, the atmosphere was both romantic and full of sexual charge. According to Ovid, these places were ideal to meet your soulmate because many girls came to watch these fights. Noble women were especially interested in them and their respective husbands were very jealous. Augustus moved the women to the upper level in order to suppress the obvious sexual passion they felt for the gladiators, but it did not help him much. Women did not take their eyes off them and liked to flirt with them and then enter into sexual relations. Gladiators had a huge popularity that today could be compared to some of the greatest athletes of this time. Their lives did not last long, but they were very stormy, imbued with enviable sexual activity. You had the opportunity to find out how much the rich Roman ladies loved and what they liked to do with them. Some details from their sexual life were, from today's perspective, very bizarre, but still normal for the era in which gladiators fought every day for their own lives and then had passionate relationships filled with sexual lust. Like this video, share it, and express your impressions about the said details. Until next time,